Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Intel Extreme Masters in Sao Paulo. A terrific crowd yet again here at the Campus Party 2014. It's now time to get into our semi-finals. But before we do that, let's check out the bracket and show you exactly how all of the quarterfinals ended up. We'll start off with Millennium versus Seven Wars. And then this afternoon, Pain Gaming will take on Ocelot and Friends. Time to introduce you to our two teams now. And our first team have flown all the way from Europe. They are a mixed bag of Europeans. Currently sitting seventh in the European LCS, one of the best teams in the world. They are Team Millennium. And they go head to head with one of Brazil's favourite teams. They are the team that wear the yellow golden jerseys of their national team. They came here yesterday and were victorious and reached the semi finals for the first time at the Intel Extreme Masters. I know they're going to make some noise for Seven Wars! <laughs> with the straw hat in place. It's time to go over to our commentators in both Portuguese and in English. Enjoy the game. Thank you for that, Red Eye. And yes, Millennium getting dead signs from the crowd, <laughs> funny enough. But Seven Wars coming in after uh, basically being their first tournament here at off an offline event on the stage, having the stage jitters yesterday, pulled out a 2-1 win. The first thing they actually stopped completely, funny enough. Second game they unfortunately lost, but the third game they looked a little bit more on, uh, a little bit more informed. It was one of those weird situations where it, the exact cause of the loss seemed to be almost incomprehensible because the difference that it, it, between both of the games for both Lion Gaming and for Seven Wars, there's, it almost looked like they were completely different players. Well, as you can see, we're having the straw hat or the nest you called it. It, it back is here. Is that not a bird nest? Maybe it's like Ocelot's scarf. Maybe that's his trademark. That I. One of those trademarks could be defined as stylish, and it's the bird nest. Oh, yeah, obviously. Actually, I remember looking at Ocelot's uh, his Facebook fan page, and someone said on it, like, I doubt you'll wear a scarf while playing tomorrow because of how hot it is in Brazil. He wasn't wearing it, but he put it on after, so I'll give him credit for that one. But, you know, Seven Wars, what are we expecting out of them? Because they're kind of the underdogs coming into this. They're playing against an LCS team probably for the first time in their careers. It's going to be difficult. Yeah, they have some interesting tricks up their sleeve. For instance, they love to run Tristana as an AD carry. That is not something I think I've seen any EU LCS team do. Maybe you'll see it from an NA CLG team kind of style, but... I felt like you're trying to call a double up right now. I'm not calling him out. I'm just saying that's something they do. It doesn't tend to work, but they do it. It's, it's a but. The thing about it is, if it can work, it can work so well that it can completely turn around the game. Well, right now, I feel like Jerry's happy because he's drawn a Thresh, or sorry, a Thresh ban and a Zillion ban. I've been played him in both their games yesterday. Did a pretty good, good job. I mean, that's when you heard uh, that great ultimate sound coming out of your, coming out of you. The, the ar uh, uh, yeah, I, you did. There you go. There you I go, Red Eye. There's your, there's your the daily, time. there's your daily sound that you put me up to today. You but we do have mind. Vi banned out by Seven Words as well, and Ziggs and Oria banned out of Millennium. So, not too much that's surprising, really, from the Ziggs and the Orianna. Locking away strong mid laners, safe mid laners, forcing maybe some unconventional picks, but wouldn't be too surprised if we just saw the standard stuff and obviously the captain fan. Yeah, nothing too surprising. Yeah, the, the Orianna booster just played so damn well on Orianna yeah. yesterday. It was, it was ridiculous. He kept farming really well. His ultimates would just shred apart teams. But at least picked up as, as the first pick for Seven Wars. We know Crow has played it, did fairly damn well on it. What do you think? Yeah, he's taking it away as well. Everyone in the <laughs> From EU the Spider LCS. King. <laughs> that, that is what his name means. But everybody knows that EU probably values Elise above almost anything else. What are you chuckling about? He already hovered over Mordekaiser. I, they're looking for the crowd here, but they're not going to get it because no. they're not Brazilian. <laughs> Even the Brazilians didn't get one, unfortunately. But we do see Lucian and Annie uh, picked up here. So we have the bottom lane for Millennium picked up. And we do have Yasuo and Gragas for seven words. And you can hear the crowd. They're happy about that. Combo we actually saw last game. Those two synergize very, very well. But what it does mean is seven words have committed to Yasuo top lane without knowing what he's up against. And that's a very dangerous move. There are a lot a of statement. champions that can, well, Yasuo is very, very strong even if he falls behind. He gets to two items and then he kills you regardless. But if you can shut him down early and use that to get some map pressure advantage early on, it can work out. But we saw Renekton versus Yasuo yesterday and it didn't work. 
And right now, we're, we're seeing them hover over Lee Sin, where Arnea, in their second game of the day, did flawlessly. He was amazing. I think he was 6 and 60 in that game. I don't remember the exact score, but he didn't die in that game, if I remember correctly. And he did a fantastic job. He's always been a fantastic Lee Sin player. And then the Renekton uh, for Kevin Topplane. I mean, Kevin, I hardly ever see him losing lane. He played Renekton in the first game, played Olaf in the second. If I remember correctly, you look at me like I'm wrong. Well, no, I'm I'm looking at you because you said uh, he very rarely loses his lane yesterday, and then he sort of did. They won the game. That's all it counts. They won the way, game. We do see Essek go for the Tristani yet again, and the Fiddle Six. This is what we saw them actually use in game yes. number one. That was their that was their really cool combo that they worked together because they had so much wave clearing power. It basically meant that the aggressive Lucian lane they were up against could never get into a position where they could look for an engage, where they could look to actually take advantage of their burst. So basically, becomes where Tristana is just farming without having to worry about engage bomb and kill. That also gives them an option for 2v1s, but they didn't choose to take that last time. And right now we're seeing Skarner being hover over. Pretty sure we're not going to see that. We did see Kurt play LeBlanc yesterday which to me might fit their play style a bit more because they have the ability yeah. to just burst someone down very quickly. It's the two-man roaming squad. We saw this exact combo yesterday. Aranea on Lee Sin, Kerb on LeBlanc roaming together, and that was the reason they were able to get something like 10k gold on towers because they just kept killing them over and over and over again. And he got so many picks on so many players and was in a matchup against Gragas did pretty well. In spite of the fact he's kind of a safe champion, apparently not safe enough. There's one thing that worries me, though, in this matchup, is the Fiddlesticks and LeBlanc. Because if you think about it, if LeBlanc jumps into your team and you are quick enough to hit that Fear Honor, basically you're going to die, because you're just a sitting target into a Gragas Baron's Cocoon, into Yasuo and Gragas combo. Like That's something that Kurt has to be really prepared for, but we saw as LeBlanc yesterday, he played phenomenally on it. He really, really did. And LeBlanc has a lot of options available to her. She can, or, I mean, you could see, for instance, uh, I remember there was a situation where Gragas was walking towards a dragon fight, Kurt popped over the wall, one combo, dead. That kind of stuff, that's not what Fiddlesix can deal with. Fear is actually a relatively short range skill, so he has to be really quite close in order to do that. And he's going to have to predict the W coming in in the first place. And Kurt play it so that he is. Uh, uh, trying to bait out the cube because there is an animation on it. You can distort instantly. You can get out if he's in range and you realize you've made a terrible mistake. All right, well, this is the first game in this best of three between these two teams. One of us will advance on, play against the winner of Pain Gaming and Onslaught World, who just got into the semifinals in the best of three you just saw earlier on. But look at these two teams, look at the compositions. Who do you favor? What team do you really, are you really gunning for to win this one? I really actually like Seven Wars' composition. I feel like they have a lot of uh, extreme skills, but the favorites have to be Millennium. They have a more proven track record against, I, I hesitate to say, uh, uh, teams, but they're in a more competitive environment more often, and that gives you experience that Seven Wars just do not have in an offline environment. So you're saying Millennium, that's, that's your, that's what you're going with. I'm not going to call see, it either what, I way. I used to do that too. I used to walk the fence quite a bit. And then I was like, you know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to guess on someone. And I have to say this will probably be Millennium because just of the comfort picks that they got across the board with Kerb on the block, Arne on the Sin. You know, you have Renekton uh, played by Kevin J. Reed. Such a good aggressive and even passive uh, uh, support with mixing with Creighton on the Lucid who did so damn well on it. I, 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 want, I hope it's going to be a close game, but I, I feel deep down that Millennium's going to take it. You have to wonder how well Crow is going to play Elise in this situation. A lot of it depends on him preventing mid lane from snowballing out of control. If Kerb can be kept kind of on a leash, he won't be able to do the jump over the wall, one combo burst, a squishy target move. And uh, oh. Essa, oh. This is not going to be good. He's in a good position, though. He's in the back of the tri bush, so it's going to be really hard to get to him here. But if you get a flash stun out of Jerry, it's going to be his death. He's not paying attention. What is he doing? He just flashes so late. And anyway, pretty much giving that one away. But he does get locked down. He does actually be forced to take his jump as his first skill. And that was really unfortunate because that's not what you want to take as a level one. And that is, I, I guess, just a misplay. He didn't really expect them to come around that corner. He sat there so long. But flash down on both the support of J. Ree and the AD carry of Essa, that actually favors Essa and Seven Wars in general. He has an escape. 
Danny does not. If there is an early gank from Crow to take advantage of that, Jay Ree is going to be a sitting duck, an easy target. And right now, you see him heading up towards the top side of the jungle, trying to see if they're going to be uh, counter jungled at all. And right now, little do they know, they will be. Crow is there in the vicinity. He's going to actually back away, but not before getting that ward down. So they will be able to maintain control of their side of the jungle here. And Arne, it looks like he's going to start off a blue buff here. And we're going to have normal lanes coming in. So looking at both these compositions, who do you favor early to late? Like, what, what, what is Seven Wars looking to do early game? Are they looking to survive it, looking to win it? And what is Millennium trying to do? Seven Wars early game is mostly going to consist of just farming up their huge late game carries that they have in the form of Tristana and in the form of Yasuo. Expect a lot of jungle pressure on that bottom lane. Even if there weren't flashes down in that lane, I still think there would be a big, big focus there because the disadvantage, obviously, of pushing up really, really hard with Fiddlesticks Tristana is you can end up in a situation where Lee Sin can just W over the wall, follow it up with a Q, get an easy gank off, and obviously couple that with the Annie stun. You've got a lot of potential there. But at the moment, they're actually getting pushed back, which actually, in turn, means that Crow may be able to take advantage of his own gank. He is on a path where he could go for a relatively early gank, and that would be uh, not too surprising. Yeah, so it's, a, it's a really... Uh, it's, 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 the bottom lane to me feels like a result of what we saw level 1 because of Essa being forced to take his W first, his rocket jump. They're not able to push the lane up because he doesn't have explosive shot. He can't wave clear as quick as uh, Creatin can. And you might be right about Crow because he's taking his red back here. He might, down, or he might swing down towards his bottom side where there's actually no wards until the one we just saw uh, be put down. But it was spotted. This means he could potentially come in from lane. Doesn't look like he's going to go for it. In the end, deciding just to farm the jungle. I'm not sure I agree with that, but maybe he's paranoid because it's too obvious of a gank, or maybe he's just, just taking a really circuitous route. I'm not actually sure what he was looking for I think there. He's, I think he's expecting RNA to be there to go for a gank because of how far Brewster was pushed. And he's, he, I think he's respecting RNA quite a bit on that least sin, but I think he might be over-respecting it because it's, it's playing mind games with himself. And right now you see RNA, he's you know, visiting the top side. He's finally coming for a gank here, but Pro, you know, he didn't really need to commit that time. Maybe could have went somewhere else, but obviously we're going to find out as the game does go on. RNA is going to actually head up to counter jungle potentially here. He did quite a bit of that yesterday um, in their match, and I wouldn't be surprised to see that happen again. His C and B just honestly couldn't deal with it, and he's headed towards the top side. He wants to go for a gank on Xantons here. He's not spotted coming in. This could be very dangerous. Yeah, Yasuo is definitely feeling that there could be a gank here. He's letting minions drop, but he's actually quite close up. And Elise is coming in behind. If this ends up in a straight up two on two, it really is going to depend who engages first, because they will come out on top. They pinged him. They know he's there. And you see Crow, he's waiting on the sideline to go for a counter gank here. And I wonder what's going to happen. Who's in the spot here? Who first? Because look how close they are right next to each other. We do see the engage. Finally break in from Kevin, looking for Xantons. They actually wards it up, knowing that he's not there. Crow has to hurry up and get into those fight. He does like a cocoon onto Kevin, but can they actually get the kill off this? Kevin does have flash get away. He does have his Q, obviously, to stay healthy. And it's just going to be a null gank from both these top laners. Very good usage, though, I think, in general. I, it was a nice call by Seven Wars. They knew where Aranea would be. And Aranea is the one who's wasted a lot more time in that situation. And meanwhile, the bottom lane has finally gotten to where it wanted to be all along. They've started to push back the Millennium bot lane. They're keeping them pressed up to the tower, and they're staying sustained. This combo is actually really working out. It's really hard to deal with that, especially with the silence to pair in. But right now, we see Arne Vision is top side yet again. Xantos does have flash. The Q lands before he gets the flash off, and that's going to be first blood going over to Arne. A great gank and a great Q coming up to make that kill happen. You've got to feel, though, is he, was he, did he just feel he could get out without losing his flash? Why not just be that little bit safer, do it a little bit faster? Ah, it's cost him a lot. Renekton can snowball the lane hard. And Yasuo has a lot of trouble with pushing up. If he's weaker than Renekton in a one-on-one, -on -one, that will be punished hard. And you're seeing the bottom lane Millennium. They had a very tough time yesterday. Uh, actually talking to, uh, to them last night, and Kirtan wasn't really sure what was going on, but he just kind of isn't really keeping up with farm just yet. He's being pressured back quite a bit, like you were mentioning, and he's not really... ...at least come to know out of him uh, over the split of uh, spring... In summer, or summer split. Etc. Those things can throw you off, and it's a pretty warm day. That can affect mentalities for people. All people. Humans. They said old people. I'm like, wow. <laughs> <laughs> well, right now, we do have CS across the board. A little bit of lead in the top side for Kevin. 36 to 28 CS. Mid lane, 
pretty much dead even between these two uh, these two players. And bottom lane, you do have that slight lead for Essa currently. And his Tristana was was fantastic yesterday. He did a, a great job on, on that uh, champion. And I wonder if he can pull it off yet again here. But he's pushed up. And Arne, he's waiting for City. Crow, he's coming down towards the bottom side here. Flashes are available for Jerry to go in for a stun here. As Arne is coming around the corner. And he does back away. I'm not sure if he was spotted, though. There's no pings coming down. So I'm assuming he wasn't. But he's still going to be sticking around for a little bit here, taking his white camp. And Kerp, he's hit level 6. He's looking for that harass. He stayed safe in lane the entire time. And when he hits level 6, he's going to try to harass as much as possible with that blue buff. Yeah, he went for the flask start, which is very, very safe. But Aranea is going to go for the Q. Oh, unfortunately, he does miss it here. Jerry doesn't age and go for the stun as it does land a little bit later on. And they do end up turning around and thwarting that gank. So great dodge by Essa. Able to uh, stay alive right there. And... Right now, Seven Wars only down about 300 goals. Arne is trying to visit this top side. He's going to actually get in between Crow and Bruce, so this is not the, great, the greatest of positions to be in, but it looks like he favored his chances against Crow a little bit right there. And compare this game right now to the game we saw yesterday with CNB trying to deal with the Yas uh, sorry, the uh, LeBlanc and Arne Lee Sin combination. This game with Snowball would have been snowballed a lot, lot harder if they were playing against the same people they were yesterday. It's not working out. And Seven Wars, they have a really, really strong late game. The mid game, Millennium still has decent odds, but if it gets super late, there's nothing to compare with Tristana. Right now, Kerp able to get his going blue buff here. This is where he gets very dangerous, as he was able to yesterday. Just able to constantly harass, but against the Gragas, who can heal up quite a bit, not really be that much of a danger as well as Bruce should be able to get his own blue buff here. But a relatively slow game, we're eight minutes in. Not a big lead for either team. Currently about 400 gold right now, and both junglers have really been shut down, minus that one gank we saw top lane, have really making anything happen so far. Lee Sin is the one that's going to suffer more, though, if he's not getting the kills early on. Elise, somewhat better of a late game. Not, I mean, neither of them are, you know, super late game champions, but they are both decent only. But Lee Sin becomes pretty much just an initiation bot, and that's that's okay. That will be the primary form of initiation, assuming Annie Tibbers is down. But they don't really need that particular aspect so much if Annie Tibbers is up. Well, Jerry, we saw him doing some fantastic ultimates uh, yesterday. I, I wouldn't be surprised if he was able to do them here on Annie as well. But both these teams, I think they're they're really respecting each other. Millennium. You know, we heard uh, Red Eye actually interviewing Arne after their games yesterday, saying, you know, we, uh, I'm curious why it took you guys so long to finish the games. You know, you're an EU LCS team. Uh, since you guys to be able to close out a game quicker if you're in the lead. And they, he said he's just trying to play it by the books, trying to play smart and trying to be careful. And it looks like uh, they're doing that yet again. They realize it's on the line. You know, every team wants to go to the World Finals at Katowice. And this is the opportunity for Millennium to get there. If you think about it as well in terms of... Millennium. We, I mean, we spoke about it yesterday, but the pressure they're under, oh, they have sorry. huge means. The Fiddle Six ulti coming in, Jerry, and actually Cretan both flashed out of it in time. Actually, sorry, Cretan didn't. He actually just dashed away, but they are able to escape from that. A great attempt out of uh, Kimmy right there, who did an amazing job yesterday on every support he played, but Millennium was just a little bit too quick. So if you think about it, uh, Millennium in terms of the pressure on them, I'm, <laughs> the leads may not be done here, so I may have to cut off the fort, but. Millennium are going to keep playing it by the books for as long as possible. And I think that might be something Seven Wars is playing off by picking this super late game composition. They've got Yasuo as well as Tristana, both of them incredibly strong in that late game situation. And they know Millennium. Yes, they played defensively. And yes, they even when they were massively ahead, ten took ages to finish out a game. But. Be able to get away from this. Well, it looks like to the team he's gonna get the, the dash right there, but he does get slowed up right here. He does get the nice knockup. Are they gonna commit this? No, they're actually not gonna go for the dive. If you remember against CMB, they did this two man dive early on, and they actually both died for it. They both paid the price, and this time playing a little bit smarter this time, not gonna let it happen. In the meantime, we are seeing Crow actually go for Dragon here. He's gonna have the backup from Kimmy, and this might be seven where he's getting a nice little bit of an advantage off of that. But Arane is heading down to that area. They will be able to get in and try and stop this. Oh, Jerry no. is there. He's level 6 too. He has the Timbers. He does get Sunset. He does get feared. He does get the Timbers off. Gets the kill on a crow. Turns around. Gets Kimmy as well. And Essley's looking for the kill on him, but he just doesn't have the damage. He even flashed in for it. That might prove to be a mistake. And they get the swap Arane. And they get a double kill on a They get the three kills. They're going to get Dragon as well. And that was a breaking point. That is a huge advantage for Millennium now. Over towards the top side as well, Xanta's getting very low. He's being forced out, being forced to flash away. 
And Millennium, they just seem to have cranked on this aggression out of nowhere. And it was just basically Aaron Nair predicting the Dragon Call. He made, he, as soon as the gang was failed in top lane, he didn't hang around. He didn't wait, or, wait to try and get any farm in the jungle. He headed straight down there. And because of Annie's strength in that kind of situation, because of Lucian's early burst and the fact that Tristana is not that strong at the moment, even though they've been winning the lane, they were not able to fight that, and that meant Millennium was able to just clean it. Oh, Arne still gets the steal away right there. And she's getting caught here with Kim, getting feared up. Looks like he's not going to be able to escape this one. Does flash with the wall, does safeguard as well. He's going to get out of range of Crow, and that will allow him to escape with Creech in there to back him up. And Arne getting very lucky right there. That could have been very bad, but he does still escape. He does deny that big uh, golem as well. And this is a Millennium that we were kind of expecting to show up right now, but you can't really count seven wars out. Arguably there, though, the Aranea took a risk he didn't need to. He was very close to being in repel uh, range, and he still had a ward. He could have jumped further. That ward in the Tribrush wasn't necessarily what you describe as, like, a, as, as far as he could have gone, optimally. So I wonder whether he just felt really confident in his, uh, in his distance judgment, or whether he was just panicked, caught off guard, and not actually ready to be having to jump out. Right now, either way, he was still able to escape right there. And Seven Wars still have una been unable to really pick up a kill. And if you look across the lanes, I mean, I guess we can talk about this. Kevin has a slightly in the top lane of CS, about 17 at the moment. Look at the jungle, Arne has a lead as well. Mid lane, it's dead even uh, across these two players. And bottom lane, there is a lead built up for Essa, 101 to 86 CS. At this point, though, Lucian with the two kills has more goal and is also at a much stronger phase of the game. He is way, way stronger in terms of his burst. And because now Essa hasn't gotten pushed up against the tower, he can look to try and fight engages in order to prevent him from ever getting pushed up again. You can see right there the range is starting to become a problem for Creighton. And even the damage that he's doing to Essa really isn't that much. And Essa going for that patented static shift first item that we saw him do every Tristana game yesterday. Worked out really well in those games, however, in those games as well, he had a bigger lead than he has now. He's able to get a couple kills on his belt, but in the meantime, seeing Arne trying to go for a gank on the middle, and will be thwarted very hard to gank that man. And Kevin, with that Sunfire kick completed, he's looking to get that turret low, and it's already down to about a fifth life. The purpose of the static shift first Tristana is actually quite an interesting one. It's not intended for team fighting at all. It's basically intended to create map pressure. You just push as hard as you possibly can and try and force objectives as a result of that. Arne is looking for the smite seal away from this. He's actually going to go back and he does not steal it. Crows it managed to actually get it, but can Arne escape? He does get the kick away, but does have anything. He does ward up over the wall. And it's like he's going to escape, but Crow goes over. Bruce is going to pick up the kill. And there's the first kill finally coming in for Seven Wars. Meantime, top lane does die. Or top turret does die, sorry. And a one kill advantage coming in for Seven Wars, but they did lose that turret. It was also quite a close engagement went on in the bottom. In the meantime, top lane, you're seeing Kevin not really take much damage yet out of Zentis. Very fast as he does have the DFG. I mean, he picked that item up before he even had boots. That's how quickly he wanted to go for it here. And he's gonna hit level 11 here, I would say, momentarily. Who that could be boots really dangerous. Those dashes. Oh, not him, apparently. As you see him do some pretty good damage on a boost right there. Doesn't use that DFG just yet, but look how hard it is for anyone to gank this LeBlanc. Yeah, especially with no Grag Assault, they just don't really have reasonable amounts of chances because they can't even burst her down fast enough if Elise lands the stun without that explosive cast. It's, it's just not really worth doing beyond maybe creating an opportunity for Dragus to go back or roam or take rates as he currently is doing and kind of ruining his own mana pool. He's looking to get a farm advantage or at least stay caught up. I mean, he's tied up against LeBlanc currently, and Gragas, it's really easy to farm with, and you can see right there, he's able to clear out that Siege minion, as well as the back lane, uh, with just one Q, but he also went for Anthians and Holy Grail, so he wanted the extra magic resist early on, and Curb, I feel like this is the time that he needs to start picking up some kills, he needs to start roaming around, make that DFG really worth it, and really kind of flex his mid-game power. Yeah, that's uh, pretty much the LeBlanc time to shine in that roaming style. Oh, but, no. Oh, yes. Kevin, he doesn't have any spawn, he does get caught, he's gonna slice and dice over that wall. Oh, he's not! Oh, he's actually gonna oh, get caught, he's gonna be really bad, they had the explosive cast available. They couldn't catch him off guard here, Arnett comes in from the side to try to protect him, but gets knocked in very long, they kick Brewster over the wall, and out of it. goes down, Kirk is here. To finally help out, he's actually gonna flash. Oh, he gets the kill to Crow! He's gonna turn on a Brewster! 
Cursor, he gets so low, he's gonna go with Curve. Does he have the cooldown to get back in here? He's trying to chase him down, and it looks like Zantes will be able to escape this. So in the end, Millennium coming out ahead, only losing one man and taking two down. Great turnaround by Curve, though. If he hadn't, I don't know, if he, it would have been quite reasonable to expect him to face plant that wall, but he knew exactly how far he was gonna go with WR get on that kill. And as a result, well, Millennium came out on top of a fight. I'm not sure they should have done. See Forge traded right there in that trap bush, and Kryptan able to push this turret down quite a bit because Esso has been forced to back away, forced to heal up. And we're starting to see Millennium flex their muscles a little bit. It was a great little bit of engagement. Seven Seven was able to pull off, able to capitalize on the mistake that Kevin made of not being able to slice on top of the wall, but they weren't really expecting Kirk to be there, and they really didn't have the three-on-three -three power that maybe they were expecting. And right now, Millennium, they're not, they're not done yet. They're still going to push this turret down. As I said, like they do back away, but they do have the turret lead nonetheless. It just took them a little bit longer to kill Renekton than they were expecting, and that's a common problem because obviously gaining, you know, 400 health out of nowhere is a pretty significant chunk and throws off people's estimations. I actually don't know if Renekton has base magic resist scaling, but I wouldn't be surprised if he does, and that is also another key factor in causing people to misjudge how hard they can burst the character. All right now, Kevin, he actually went for another giant spell here. He does have the Sun Barricade completed from about five to 10 minutes ago. And he does have a Negatron Cloak on top of that. So any scaling matches that he has, he's now at 96. He's able to really sustain against the damage that Bruce can do. He really has that Unthings and Holy Grail, but now Kerb, maybe getting ganked here in the middle. And he's, he's been doing a fantastic job of really pulling Crow towards middle multiple times, but not getting caught either way. Yeah, and he can burst people hard. He's looking for it. Crow has nowhere to go right here. He's gonna get caught on the Kevin. They are gonna get the stun off, but Kerb's gonna back away. I don't want to actually go straight into that. Kevin going to run right into the barrel because he's not scared of any sort of damage. In the meantime, though, we are seeing RNA and Kurt, or Jerry go for this dragon. Boost is here on the sidelines. They're just trapped in the middle lane, though, trying to keep them away from Jerry. Look how low Crow is. He cannot afford to go in for the smite steal. And this should be dragon going over to Millennium. But we might see a 5 on 5 breakout. Kimmy can't ult over this wall. This could be very dangerous for Millennium. We do see Kurt take down Crow in a matter of a second. He's actually being forced out of the fight completely. He does get in the back of the middle of it. As you see the ultimate coming up from Fiddlesticks, they're turning on to Kimmy. He's very low on life. The Koli comes out. They're going to pick up the kill. And now they're turning on to Zantons, who's already very low on life. This looks like he's going to be able to escape with the help of that knockup. But Millennium, they pick up two because they pick up Dragon. And RNA, he's not looking to be done just yet. He has much available if he can just land this cube. Kevin slices it through the goals. He lands the kill on his entrance, but he's not going to care for this fight. They're going to back out. And it looks like they're going to be happy with the trade that they're able to pick up. A dragon fight purely one off of the strengths of LeBlanc. In that dancing situation, it just creates lots of opportunities for her to pick someone off or take them down very, very low. And then to convert that into, uh, you know, someone being forced out of the fight, which you can then or if they stay in, then you can just wait for, you know, 20 seconds, build up that cooldown, and kill them completely. So, if you are in a situation against one, you have to either engage or run away. It's almost like a poke champ, but in such it just gives people. And right now, Kevin, he's trying to push his turret down. He has some decent damage on top of Arne. Is going to help him out here? It looks like they're not going to go for it just yet. They do have Kerp there as well, so it looks like they want to Kerp this turret, but Brewster does show up. This is also on RNA. They're looking to kill onto him. They do get the combo in from Xantis, but RNA, and that is taken away. He's going to be able to survive with the help of that Iron Will. And just like that, I mean, that's two big ultimates completed. They're not obviously on the longest of cooldowns, and there's not going to be any judges to contest just uh, anytime soon, but RNA was able to survive, and that's, that's what's really key. He can survive the burst damage out of the combo of the double ultimates. Yeah, that's a big, big deal for him because it means he knows now he can play even more aggressively than he's been doing so far. And I think one of the big problems right now for Seven Wars is that Tristana is not finding uh, opportunities to rotate to other lanes to create the pressure that she knows she needs to be doing with her uh, with her static shift first build. Because at the moment, no team fighting presence, but they're being trapped in the bottom lane. Millennium's bot lane continuing to stay down there and just rely on the rogue from Kerb and Aranea to keep them safe and prevent them from being caught out in a four on two. And the thing is, is that we saw the bottom lane of Seven Wars have a CS lead earlier on in the game. They had about 20 CS lead over Kreatin and Jerry, but now they're the ones behind. They're the ones actually losing out on the CS. They're the ones starting to fall uh, a couple of items behind as you see Kreatin have that Triforce done. And that was kind of a saving grace for Seven Wars because top lane wasn't doing amazing. Uh, mid lane was, you know, keeping up in CS to curb, but their bottom lane was the real lane that was really holding them together, and now that is just starting to dwindle away.
as the minions grow proportionally weaker, so does Tristana's shove them into tower strategy. As things are now, Millennium can afford to just go engage. And as again, caught right there again, solo on left the fear, gonna be able to save, uh, save him as he's able to just completely run away here. Arnev doesn't have Flash to get onto him just yet. We're gonna see Kerp, looks like he actually wanted to go down onto Brewster here, but really trying to make some plays happen. A great ward coming out as well to really spot him um, from picking up anything. And Tantans, I still wanna focus on him a little bit because he's doesn't have a big CS lead. He's actually behind almost a th actually over a thousand gold to his opponent and because the double dragon's being picked up. Kurt, damn it, you do too much damage. I can't actually follow that. It's so hard to be able to see when that is coming. <laughs> but he does get uh, Rooster very low on life. But he's starting to go in here. He's going to get the kick on the crow, but that's not the man he was actually looking for. Kurt, going to be able to pick up the kill on the Brewster with that ignite. And that means they start pushing down middle, maybe barrel down onto this turret as Creatine's still pushing that bottom lane and drawing more than one man from Seven Wars there. Yeah, and now Millennium have another tower for free, increasing that global gold difference that was already accounting for so much difference in what would otherwise be an equal lane for Seven Wars. That top lane you mentioned before, Yasuo not doing that well now, proportionally. Wow, that damage right there, almost enough to pick up the kill. And there's one thing I want to bring, uh, bring up for you guys at home who aren't really too familiar with Kerb. He's playing the block with a trackball mouse. He's doing all the movements of the actual mouse with his thumb. Imagine how insanely hard that has to be on the block when you need to be able to move forward or backwards to really guide your, your W or guide your E. That's that's ridiculously hard. He's been doing a fantastic job of it. But Millennium now, 5-0 to zero in turrets, picking up two off that little bit of a push. 93 in kills, almost a 10,000 gold lead here 22 minutes in. This is starting to get out of hand. It is really getting out of hand. But I don't know why everyone always calls out the trackball. I know it's like really hard for everyone that isn't curved, but I don't think he'd be using it if he found it hard. It's Have not you like seen? He's like, oh, I'm so good at this game, I need a handy Have you seen the muscle on his thumb? His right thumb is a lot harder. Um, yeah, I I I touch it after this, after this game and you'll see why why I'm so impressed with him because that man <laughs> He has like <laughs> bicep <laughs> on his thumb. It's ridiculous. But either way, he's been doing a fantastic job this game. 3 1 and 1, 170 CS. He's uh, currently beating his opponent. Almost has his death cap done. One minute happens. Xantins, who just got, you know, quickly combo by him without a DFG, almost dropped. It's going to get even more dangerous. I don't know how it is in America, but I don't think the people, at least in Britain normally, would just go up to a man they've never met and say, Can I touch your thumb? This is important. It's because you guys are too busy having cups of tea. I, I like coffee. Well, then, you're not clearly fish, buddy. <laughs> hey, this game. Oh, really? Have you, have you listened to me recently? Not often. Oh. I end the semifinals, <laughs> not though. If you can avoid it. They're looking in this best of three for the first map win here. And, oh my god, Kerb! He catches Zantins on the rotate with that dash, and they're going to pick up that kill. That was insane! The prediction on that occurred was amazing. Even if you know exactly when Yasuo is going to dash, that's something that people would not find easy. Trying to land chains is difficult normally. If it's someone like that's already rooted, trying to land an R chain, you see people miss it all the time. That's, that's incredibly skilled stuff there. And that's why Kirk is a, a handicap, <laughs> as you saw right there. But right now, let him actually potentially looking for a fight. As you saw, Seven Wars, they're pushing up, and it looks like they might even be able to go for this turret here on the top side. This Kerb's able to shove that lane in, but Draken has respawned. It looks like that might be the possibility of Millennium here. They already have an 8.1 thousand gold lead. It's only going to get bigger off this. And you look across the board, the kill spread is perfect. Two kills for Kevin, one kill for Aranea, three kills for Kerb, three kills for Creatin, even one kill for Jay Reed. The bottom lane of Millennium has yet to even die. They are looking so strong and so, uh, so smooth in this game. This is the area where Millennium are their weakest. They now need to close out this game. They are a long way ahead. We know they are. They can kill almost anyone they please. If Brewster gets found here, he is liable to die. But you've got to think, are Millennium actually going to close it out for people? If they just group up and siege, I don't see anything that Seven Wars can do to stop them. But they don't. Is there a right now? Dragon for them to go for. They could go for a couple of turrets, but... Something that I just noticed between both these teams is look at the trinkets. We have all warding trinkets out of Seven Wars, and we have three sweepers out of Millennium. And you're seeing Millennium use that to their advantage. They are using it every time they possibly can. They're clearing out all the vision of the jungle. I mean, let's just, let's just take you through the vision that Seven Wars has across the map. They've got one ward down towards the bottom half of the jungle, and two wards, three wards here. Look over at Millennium. 
they can see a good portion of the bottom jungle. They can see pretty much the entirety of the top jungle. They are giving the vision everywhere, and they're denying it away from Seven Wars. And that's getting to the point where if you are waiting to you, he says surprise and attacks you. Everything matters who you are right now. This is actually something that Aaron Nair, uh, who was watching uh, the Ocelot World game as earlier, was very, very vocal about. He was saying, it's really not right. They had, they were winning the game. They were way, way ahead in the first game. And yet they only had one sweeping trinket. It becomes infinitely more valuable to your team if you're ahead to sweep out the enemy wards. You can always get a couple of wards and cover pretty much all the important areas. But you, if you're sieging, for instance, the enemy base, you only need like two wards. You just cover behind you and cover over the wall so you can see what's there. You just need, you, if you get rid of the enemy uh, vision though, that gives you so many options. You can lane rotate, you can catch people out, you can go for Baron, you can start forcing, uh, you know, uh, steal away buffs for free, essentially. You know, that gives you a lot of options that otherwise people can't compare with. Right now, Xantan's looking to get a nice wind wall comes out of him, does block that second one. But Malayan, they have basically full control of this whole top side of the jungle, full control towards Baron. There's one more that they're going to spot right there and take it away. And this forces, you know, Seven Wars, if they don't want to let this Baron go, they're going to have to face check this. And when that happens, you have Kirk waiting off the side towards Blue Buff. You have that Annie Storm waiting for you. You have the Colin. You have Kevin being the tanky monster beast right now that can stop you. Wow. And you see him go in. He's going to get the kill. He got him. On <laughs> instantly on his Antons. And that just shows you how much damage Kirk does. And he's still just waiting there. He's like, all right, guys, you do it. I want to pick them up one by one if they keep coming in here. And Seven Wars immediately reacting, immediately just leaving, realizing that, guys, we're not going to get Baron here. We got to let that one go. Let's run around jungle. Let's maybe push some waves out and try to do something. Yeah, and I have to actually criticize slightly that Seven Wars didn't predict that. Kerb has been spending pretty much the whole game waiting for people to walk past unwarded areas and bursting them. If, as we mentioned uh, before, Phil Six is really, really close up, at least Kurt won't jump in and gib someone instantly, because that way he'll get feared and might die himself. He's not gonna take that risk. That would have given As it happened though, they just they just lost the guy and then lost the Baron. They were actually worse off than if they had just stayed in their base. Well, right now, they need to do something here. We saw them do some final stands uh, in their game yesterday, playing against Lion, and it was able to work out for them, but they unfortunately did lose that game, and it wasn't that big of a difference as we're seeing right now. We're at 11,000 gold between these two teams. Baron up from Millennium, they are full items ahead. Kerb is able to do that. <laughs> if he's able to do that, you're not going to stand a chance, and that was your jungler who kind of needs to build a little bit tanky, and he has mad resist. I just seen Arne go ahead. He blocks the, blocks the body slam. It's actually going to flash past Santos right there, looking for a kick. The barrel actually does spread them apart. We didn't see Kurt, but he picked up a kill on some fiddle sticks, and now we see Gragas go down. Santos, he's not going to escape here. He's going to go down to Kurt as well, picking up a double kill, and they pick up the four kills. They're looking to take this in here turret. They still have the barrel, but plus the regen here and the timbers to tank it up. It looks like Millennium are at least going to pick up inhibitor off of this. Kerb's ultimate right now, even when he's using the dash version of the ultimate, is half health in Essa. That's, that's quite a lot of the burst. He doesn't need his ultimate to burst, basically, or he doesn't need his chain. And when you get to that level of burst, it just gets crazy. And Millennium, they're like, you know what, we're not even going to bother killing them again. We're going to go for the win here. We're going to take this map. All right, this first map, 29 minutes, and in the semifinal, all it takes is one more for them to advance into the grand finals. Millennium starting off strong, starting off a little bit slow, but come out with a victory right there. 15 to 3 in kills, 51,000 gold to 35.5. It almost looked too easy for them. Yeah, they built up, again, this is the thing, they built up another overwhelming advantage and then abused that to close out the game. They didn't do what a lot of teams would say you should do and close out earlier push down towers earlier, snowball that momentum into more towers, more map control, which leads to more kills. Instead, they just killed and killed and killed and killed. And that, that worked for them, but it seemed like they were honestly just outclassing their opponents rather than playing the map better. Now here's the question. Was it the hat? Was it the hat that caused that? It's, it started to sort of <laughs> like put tendrils into his brain. I don't, I don't I know. know. I don't know Straw can do that. 
But I mean, have either way, I mean, draw. Uh, we can, we can. Oh yeah, of course. Look to the south back in the states. But if you look at the, the kills that happened for Millennium, you had two zero five for Kevin. You had one two seven for Arnea, seven one two for Kerp, four zero two for Creton, one zero four for Jerry. And I want to put at the bottom lane for Millennium. They didn't die once. I think what carried uh, Seven Wars yesterday through their games was the fact that their bottom lane would win and they would carry the game throughout. Yeah. And they, in fairness to them, they were looking good early on. They pushed them back, they got the CS advantage, but then they just let the kills go at the dragon fight. Kind of lost that. Kind of snowballed a little bit right there. Mm. But guys, we're going to take a quick little break, but when we come back, we're going to have game two between Millennium and Seven Wars here at the Intel Extreme Masters, Sao Paulo.